It's a time for more packages from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Mega Drive Retroid Pong Bagged. I have reviewed a lot of these devices, but nothing beats the real deals for so far. So the question remains, what are we going to get with this version? Is this one worth picking up or is it something you just need to avoid? That's why I always love to make these videos. So consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family because I do a lot of weird Wicked stuff when it comes to game systems here. Okay, so what we're going to get, it says here, good console, AV out. Gen is okay, loading. Doesn't make any sense if you ask me. But looking at the description of the bag, sadly we don't have HDMI functionality. But the device is compatible with Sega Mega Drive and Sega Genesis cartridges. So that's also what we're going to try out. I just want to see what kind of games can we play with this. Alright, so let's open it up and let's see what I'm going to get. So first of all, the packaging itself looks very nice. And you even get the option to get without box or with box and multi-game card. There are many different options. So we're going to get one with the Retroid 1 on 12 and 1 multi-game card. The system itself, this is a casing that I've seen before like many times. But the one thing I already noticing is like with the cheap devices, you get this wiggle on and off. A really cheap on and off and reset button but this thing is not bad at all first of all smell test this thing doesn't smell chemical at all uh, warranty retro tv game okay that is not big, that is not really concern me then we're going to get the controllers so we're going to take a close look at it later two of them of course and already mentioning like this the packaging is very nice i'm very curious how the audio will be because we're going to get stereo sound at least we're going to get the plugs and here we're going to get the european connection just a barrel jack power supply so yeah that's it how many volts is this thing i have no idea it says something like 7.5 what the what the heck is this if you look at the description it looks like it's made for russian market wow what the hell is going on but let's take a close look at the controller first of all the smelly test Mm, it smells very nice and not chemical so what i noticed this thing is getting really close to the authentic mega drive controller first of all the button touch is very nice it feels like an authentic controller a very nice touch start is the same and the d-pad it's the floating d-pad but normally with the cheap controllers it's getting really high and it feels really flimsy and cheap we're going to test it out how it responds later on in the video and of course a very nice high quality cable with an original connector when you take a close look at this device, it looks way better than I have seen before with other products. And this surprised me, absolutely, because I've seen my share of shitty products and I lost hope. But now, this will give me a little bit of hope. Not even talking about it, how it will sound. Ray mentioned like the on switch switch feels like way better quality. Still a little bit wiggly, but it's better than all the products I've seen before. The reset button, feels nice and nice clicky reset button. Over here, nice 16-bit decal. At the front we're going to get two controller ports, so I would not be surprised if you can use your original controllers on this. But also I'm very curious about the controls that came with this system, because they were not feeling really bad. But let's talk about the dust cover. Oh boy, these are just so horrible on most of these systems. We need to open it up to see how it looks on the inside. They feel quite slim, flimsy, and I'm always afraid that they will break down after some time. And when it comes to plugging in the games, they fit in very well, but I must say that when you want to pull them out you always need to do it like this or just pull them oh i hate that okay and at the back we're going to get all the connection and only the av out functionality sadly because i wish they use an hdmi over here we're going to get the region switch they already stated on the box that we can use paul and genesis games we're going to get stereo sound or that is something i'm hoping and of course the input for the barrel jack connection for the juice but I want to bring the testing for these systems just to the next wicked level. I tested it out in the past with some cartridges, but I wanted to test them out with all kinds of versions. And I think I've collected them all now. 
So with the test, we will include Street of Rage in number two, because I love those soundtracks and they're a great test for testing out the sound capabilities of the hardware. Then we're going to get the Bitmap Bureau Xeno Crisis. It's basically like a new game-ish homebrew. Then we're going to get Virtual Racing with the special chip. The chip that not all of the clone system will ha have to support for or the system in general. We're going to get Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the combination card that is also not supported by every single clone system. And not to forget, an original multi-game card just to see what happens if we're going to plug it in and we're trying to play some games. We're going to get the Mega Everdrive, the original Griggs edition, and that we're going to test out because also the Everdrive is not supported by every single system. And then we're going to get the multi-game card from our friend from China. Same story, not always compatible with a system. Also, we're going to test out the fake weird looking Japanese version multi-game card. Then the Sonic 2, the when he becomes fluffy, or in other words, just a retro game, a homebrew game, just to see how it works out. And of course, we're going to check out the fake versions, the ever drives from China, just to see if this game works or too. Okay, so let the testing begin on the device and let's see if it's capable of running all of these different cartridges. In the first test, we're just going to turn it on to see if there are built-in games. I hear a lot of interference, but there are no built-in games today. The game that came with it, or the multi-game card, I'm surprised because this is a completely new version. I've reviewed a couple of them, and this is a special version that came with the system itself from Retroid itself. Maybe you can buy it separately, don't know for sure, but in the end, it's a unique collection compared with the first generation I've reviewed back in today. Okie okay, dokie, so let's take a close look at it. What are we, what are kind of games you're going to get? So Victor Man 1 or 2, a game that you don't see very often. All the Street of Rage, it's Golden Axe. Holy crap, this is a really good collection. Normally we're going to get some crappy games with a 1 or 12 one, but this, ooh, blows my mind. Sonic the Hedgehog, only not a combination of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. They never put those combination cards or homebrew games on a multi-card. But the only 12 one that comes with this machine is very good. And even Ultimate Mortal Kombat. Wow. Well, one thing is a little bit bummer. You cannot use these Japanese versions. I tried to put them in, but it is just not compatible. Oh, no, it isn't. You can see like it doesn't fit it well. So I just want to point out is that there is no way to get it in. Okay, next up the Sonic 3 and Knuckles cartridge combination. And surprisingly, it works like a charm. All the sound effects are here. Works like a charm. Okay, so next up, let's try an EverDrive. This is the Chinese version that you can pick up from AliExpress for a couple of dollars. They are not very expensive, but you can see like they are working very well. So that is an option you can go with this Retroid system. Next up, I wanted to try the original Griggs edition. And here you can see that it boots up without any hassle. So over both of the EverDrive seems to be working on this fake Sega Mega Drive machine. This game, Xeno Crisis, has been released, I think it was a very long time ago, but I wanted to try it out, so let's do a quick gameplay and let's see how it plays and sounds. So next up for the region test, I just want to see if the switches work. I've put in my Street of Rage game, so let's reboot it now with different settings. All right, let's boot it up again. And let's see if it still gets the message that I can play it on my region console. 
And you can see it boots up like bare knuckle number two. Let's, let's try some games. I just want to want to hear how does it game sound on this Resident system. So when you listen to the soundtrack, you can hear some tunes are not like the original soundtrack. But yeah, that's the best soundtrack you're going to get with a fake Sega from China. Okay, so I must say the performance is not perfect. Nothing beats, in my opinion, the original Sega Mega Drive. But this freaking thing comes very close. So let's open it up. I wanted to see what is in the inside. What kind of chip are they using? Is this a chip that we have seen before? Or is this like something freaking magic that they put in GNOME inside this machine? Who knows? Who tell? So let's grab myself the screwdriver. I think I got the, yep, I got the right one. So you know that I was still having the issue when that I didn't know what kind of voltage they were using with this where it power supply. But now I got myself the answer. Look at the bottom, it says like nine volts and also the system, what kind of system they are using. But it explains, this is just the NTSC version. And that's the reason why I couldn't only choose the O and the G, the American and the Japanese version of the game compatibility. Okay. So I was one screw that I don't want to come out. Hello? Hello? Oh, it's already out. And we're going to break the seal. Oh, because I like it. Oh, boy. Hey, we have seen this before in a different video, but okay. That is something for another comparison. Let's take a close look at the top part. Okay, so first of all, they went completely hot glue madness with this LED over here. What a horrible construction. I have seen this before. They are reusing the shell for different brands. The springs here are like very thin, oh, cheap quality. So I have seen before with different systems that they just pop out and it has a problem that you need to open it up because you need to set your spring back in position. Let's take a close look at the bottom part because here's where all the magic happens. Okay guys, so this is what you're going to get. A lot of plastic, fantastic and three PCBs. Yeah, not like in the 90s that we're going to get a PCB that fills the full system. Nope, that is just what it is nowadays. So here at the front, we're going to get the controller ports, two of them, unlock it and reset button. Look at this, there is no screw holding this in place. How bad is that? Then I'm waving the middle PCB, that is basically the main board where all the magic happens and they made one big mess with all the capacitors and I'm gonna say loose components, but look at this. Like, look at this how they made it. We'll give you a quick zoom later on. And then we're having the last PCB that is attached with this ribbon cable for the AV out, the input for the nine volts, and of course the region switch. So where I thought I felt some better quality components because of the weight, you, oh man, seeing this in the inside, look at this, how the components are soldered on this freaking PCB. The production date of this product is 2011, 09, the 17. But I must say like, you cannot even read, it's barely, very hard to capture, but it says the chip, the TCT 6801, a version of a chip that we have seen before with different systems. That reason why it sounds okay when it comes to the quality of the audio. Okay guys, so what do I think of this Mega Drive from 16-bit Retroid? I, I just make it honest, nothing beats a real deal, man. Like, if it comes to the consoles and the, the quality, nothing beats it. But the controller, on the other hand, I was really surprised. It plays very nice, the D-pad is just perfect. It comes with very nice buttons, and even with the mode button. That is something you don't have a lot with these fake controllers. But the system, mm, it's slightly better than, let's say, your typical clone system. But when it comes to the emulation, or the emulation, let's say, the playback of your games, it is not like it should be. It's like nothing beats the original, the authentic Mega Drive sound. They cannot mimic it. And there is always something they mess up. But 
they're getting really close. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the Racket family, and I will see you in the next video.